the war for Sneedville. Let's do a quick recap for those of you that are new to what's going on here in the House of Wargaming. We are doing a map-based miniature war game campaign. We randomly determined that the location of our campaign would be in this quad state area. This is the eastern portion of Tennessee. You've got a little bit of Kentucky in the map, a little bit of Virginia, and a little bit of North Carolina. We've got kind of a Lord Calvin of Otherwen vibe going here. This is an Imaginations campaign where we have determined that our two nations are the nation of Knoxville down here in the southwest and Kingsport up here in the northeast. They are going to war for the control of the important crossroad of Sneedville, tiny little Sneedville. We're using real world roads, but not railroads and not boats and not, there's actually a tunnel here that goes between Middlesboro and this little town south of Cumberland Mountain. This is the Cumberland Gap, which you may be familiar with from uh, the Civil War campaigns. It's very important. In fact, in this campaign, it turns out the terrain is driving things. You, you'll, you can see, even when we haven't zoomed in, that there is a general northeast to southwest trend to things. This is a valley and range uh, terrain setup cut by rivers. These rivers are cutting valleys, and the road networks all kind of go in this direction because they go through the low kind of fertile lands. That is kind of driving things. In fact, one of the things I want to bring to your attention is that the Cumberland Mountain here is this ridge is only split by three passes within our gaming area. The Cumberland Gap, the Pennington Gap, and Big Stone Gap. That's going to be important later. But uh, to bring those of you that are, are new to this up to speed, uh, the Kingsport has gathered three armies, one in Jonesville, one in Rogersville, and one in Greenville. And we have begun to vote on what strategy they are going to adopt. And that to that end, let's take a look at the website yeah, I'm missing a lot of keys on my, my laptop keyboard. Why, yes, I do have a number of parrots. How could you tell? So I, this is a little weird. We're going to do this low rent just to do it a little easier. And let's scan down, and I'll show you what's going on here. So we have four different strategies, Operation Northwind, Bottleneck, Full Thrust, and Operation Safety Dance. And you guys, if we zoom in there, we can see that a little bit better. You guys are voting on which strategy you think that Kingsport should adopt when it comes to invading Sneedville. You'll have to look at the live stream, which I'll try to remember to throw a link to that in the description, um, where we talked about all four of those. You can also go to thesneedvillewar.blogspot.com to read up on these. And the way we're going to do this is, uh, these are the percentages, the, per the likelihood that Kingsport's leadership adopts each of these plans. Go vote. It's still open right now. Because whichever one gets the most votes, whichever one you think is the smart one, vote for that because it's going to be more likely to be adopted. We'll roll percentile dice, conveniently, 1 to 100. And so if we get from a 1 to 27, we'll, op adopt, we'll have Kingsport adopt Operation Northwind. If we get a 48 through, uh, excuse me, a 28 through 48, we'll do Operation Bottleneck. And then, if, you know, and so on and so forth. Now, we'll do that all at the same time. And we're going to do this same thing for the forces of Kingsport, Knoxville rather. The reason we're doing this is so that we can use and take advantage of the fog of war. Neither nation knows what plan the other nation is going to implement. And what that does for you as a war gamer is it allows you to step into the mindset of Kingsport and decide, well, how do I want to gather my forces? Do I want to send everybody to the south? Do I want to send them on an even front? Do I want to send two of those armies in and leave a third of my forces back for a reserve force? Today, we're going to look at the options that Knoxville has. Now, bear in mind, the, the kind of story that's developing here is that Knoxville is engaged in some kind of a diplomatic negotiation with Kingsport, and it's not going well. Kingsport has gathered their armies, they're rattling their sabers, and Knoxville thinks it's a bluff. They call Kingsport's bluff, and spoiler alert, they weren't bluffing. When Kingsport crosses the border, Knoxville says, oh geez, let all of the armed forces know that they have to rendezvous and gather up and implement our defensive plans. Remember, they have a military, and they've got contingency plans in place. The question is, which contingency plans have they ordered in case of an invasion? And remember, they don't know where these armies are coming from. So they have to have a plan that is adaptable and that is, you know, provides a full spectrum coverage. 
Now, there are two different ways to win this campaign. One is to control Sneedville at the end of about 90 days or kind of once Old Man Winter sets in and grinds everything to a halt. The other way to win is to lay siege to the enemy's capital. So there are two things you have to do. We can't just throw all of our forces at Sneedville and hope to win. If you throw all of your forces at Sneedville and the other guys besiege your city, you could still lose even though you control Sneedville. A little more strategic. So today, not knowing what Kingsport is doing, all we know is there's an army in Jonesville, there's an army in Rogersville, and then an army in Greenville. That's all we know. So let's take a look at a couple of things that we know from Knoxville. The terrain is driving our strategy to a great extent. And let's first look up here. Remember I talked about Cumberland Mountain and how there's only these three gaps. Okay, so what that does is it says, and by the way, Barberville, we've got three companies of infantry, three companies in Pineville, and four in Middlesbrough. It takes five companies of infantry to make one regiment. So really what we need to do is we're going to treat this as a fortress. We're going to bring our forces. We're going to rally them at either Pineville or maybe Middlesbrough. We have to run the numbers and see how long it takes to march. Probably smarter to take Middlesbrough because then you control, you know, you, you are in the driver's seat. That may act as a reserve. But the question then becomes, what do we do with these two guys up here? It's going to take them a long time to march down to Middlesbrough. So we have a couple of options there, and let's zoom in and take a look at that, because that's one of the things you're going to be voting on. Does Knoxville want to implement what we are calling Operation Cornerback Blitz? Harland and Everts can combine to bring four companies of infantry together. That is an understrength regiment of 600 men. They have two regiments of Lancers, and we're going to send one regiment down to Pineville. They can move fast, they'll hook up, and that gives Pineville, Pineville a couple of regiments of horse, two regiments of infantry, and a couple of batteries of cannons. We got all of our cannons right here in the center. We may send these two artillery batteries south and then send one of these in here so that we've got a little bit more flexibility with the cannons. They're not all concentrated. However, what we do... Now, one of the things I want to point out to you guys is the way that we run our casualties is that when a regiment falls below 50% effectives, regiment's 750. When you have less than 375 men in the regiment, they are no longer an effective force. Uh, so if we do this, if we combine both of these, all four of these companies of infantry, we march them up here to Big Stone Gap. We're, we're che cheating a little bit. They can kind of take this little bit right here. See this little bit? They, they're going to be marching at overland rates. It's just 10 miles a day. It'll take the guys in Harlan a day to get to Everts and then another four days to get to Big Stone Gap. But what that does is it provides a small little force that can force Big Stone Gap and get down into the backfield, hence the name Cornerback Blitz, maybe even lay siege to Kingsport. It's not a big force, but it will force... Kingsport to bring some of their troops back, and that may be, and you're going to bring a lot of them, right? Because the other issue is they these this little force, this cornerback blitz, can start messing up the supply lines. You have to be able to trace an unbroken line along these yellow roads. These are semi-improved. They're poor roads from the point of view of a campaign. Can't afford to have these guys back here. They may even be able to help pinch your movement, right? You may fight a ta tabletop war game, and I should point out, the whole goal of this campaign is not to play a paper and pen war game campaign. Those are fun. This is not that kind of channel. It's a miniature war game channel. We're trying to generate interesting battles for the tabletop. So that's one of the questions right there. Now, bear in mind, if we send these guys in, they're not going to have a lot of staying power. And that's going to bleed off power from this army over here. You know, one less regiment, one less light horse means they can do less down here in the Sneedville area. So that's a yes or no question. We've got a poll. And, you know, if it's 80-20, we could still roll the 20 and they decide to retreat. So that's one issue. The other issue is what to do with Sneedville here. Remember that we've got two armies, one in Jonesville, one in Rogersville. And those armies have anywhere from like 3,000 to 4,000 men. The two companies of infantry in Sneedville are, that's 300 men. They're outnumbered 10 to 1. How long are they going to hold out? And we're calling this operation or plan. Is it operation or plan? I can't remember. Uh, let me scroll up and double check. It's plan. Alamo Schmalamo. Do we leave these 300 men here to defend to the last? 
and try to block whichever army is heading for them? Or do we retreat them back to unite with either Middlesbrough or or Tazewell? And the numbers will depend on where we can make full regiments of five. Uh, we're not going to send two companies over here if they can't really do much of anything. Instead, what we'll do is we'll, we might send one over here and one over there or both down here. You get the idea, right? Ideally, we'd like to send one up here to make this a full regiment. But as you can see, Cumberland Mountain really drives our strategy here. So that's the second thing is, do we defend with Sneedville? Sneedville is a very defensible location, but at 10 to 1 odds, uh, this little valley right here, it doesn't show up well on, on this map, but there is a river running through here. It's the Clinch River. And that bridge across the Clinch River, you can cross it up here and down here. It's not going to buy you a lot of time. Maybe the invading army from Rogersville, bear in mind, if Jonesville invades, that's the other issue. If Jonesville invades, they've got three different paths to get to Sneedville. You don't have a single location that you can defend. If Rogersville heads north, you can defend that bridge, but they'll just send a flanking force over here, and really it'll only buy you a couple of three days. Well, three days is not that much time. It's only going to take, you know, so long for these forces to get to get gathered up. So, might not be a great idea, but hey, you guys are the War Council. You guys are voting. And as things stand, as I record this, Plan, plan Alamo Schmalamo, which is a plan to retreat immediately and prepare for a counterpunch, is running at about a 60 to 40 advantage. The third thing we need to talk about is the biggest question, and it's biggest in terms of numbers. With the northern third of the map already discussed, we have to talk about the southern two-thirds. And there's really only two ways to divide these up. Now, bear in mind, you could combine all of these troops into one big force that would outnumber any one of the other armies, but we're not going to do that. Strategically, it doesn't make any sense, because what it does is whichever army you go for, the other army is going to go slip right along behind you and take out Knoxville. Also, from a game perspective, what's the point of just implementing a whole bunch of curb stomps? You could easily just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to send each of these cities to stop the enemy forces. And every time I do that, it's going to slow them down. They'll do a little bit of damage. But again, that doesn't make for interesting tabletop battles. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two armies down here in the southern portion of the map. And the question is whether we divide the map roughly north-south. We call that plan polar vor vortices. And we have two roughly equal size armies north of, I can't remember what it is, this lake right here. Alternatively, we can divide it east and west. There's a whole lot of troops here in Knoxville and a whole lot here in Morristown. And what that does is it gives us one strong force that we can send to meet the enemy and really just hammer them. Then we have kind of a, a strong reserve force. We're calling this Plan Weeb Hammer because it's east and west, and it's, it's a nice strong hammer, that we just basically send one big wave, and then the, the second army can adapt to what's going on on the northern front. Again, remember that I-40, I-81 here, these are improved roads. You can race up those pretty quickly. So the back force does have the ability to head either north or along the southern route, flexibility is going to be key here, right? And maybe even smash their way up and then slide back down through here. Uh, so that's kind of the other one. Polar Vortices, Plan Weave Hammer, those are the two plans that we have. And we don't know, and by the way, as I record this, Operation Pol uh, Plan Polar Vortices and Weave Hammer are running at about 30 to 70. So if you think you have a better idea which one is better, is better. Go to the community tab. There's no way to link to the individual community posts, but you'll see all of those polls lined up and they're going to be active for the next few days. Uh, once I, you know, probably sometime around middle of or later of this week, we'll do a live stream and we will roll those dice live on camera to determine what the ultimate plans are going to be. Then I, the GM, Mr. Wargaming, will step back run the numbers, calculate how long it'll take each of the Knoxville armies to assemble, how long it'll take to implement the Kingsport plans, and we'll see where that first actual combat takes place. Once I do that, I can sit down and I can calculate the rough area for that battle. I can calculate the orders of battle, directions that the guys are coming in, and you guys can take a look at the real-world terrain, figure out what rule set you want to use, 
and you guys can start running that battle and reporting back to me what the results are. And the more battles we have, the more options we have for determining which one of those battles is canon. Again, we'll either vote and then let the dice decide, similar to how we do these plans, or we'll just roll some dice live on camera, whichever one you guys think best. Uh, again, this is not my campaign. This is our campaign. It's kind of a group solo exercise. And I got to tell you, I am having the time of my life. I am on the edge of my seat here. I can't wait to see which plans are implemented and to see how who's been able to outsmart the other guy, even in you know Knoxville versus Kingsport. And, uh, you know, look for more fun. I got a couple of other surprises in line for you. We are using William Sylvester's Solo Wargaming Guide for this early setup. But Henry Hyde offers us a wealth of advice for running wargaming campaigns. We're going to take advantage of some of the advice he provides in here as well. So look for that live stream in, I don't know, about three or four days, whenever the polls start shutting down. And then again, tune back in next week to see what plans were selected and kind of the early stages of this campaign, it's going to be exciting. Glad to have you aboard. I'm praying for you.